Every child has a right to a healthy start in life, but my research has shown that the very environment meant to nurture our children is often putting them at risk right from the start of their lives. Today, I want to share the urgent need to protect pregnant mothers and their developing babies from environmental hazards and why this must be at the heart of our climate and environmental action. Hello, I am Dr. Frederica Pereira, a special research scientist and professor emerita of environmental health sciences at Columbia University in New York. The scientific evidence is clear and compelling, as highlighted in the UNICEF brief that I helped review Fragile beginnings, pregnant women and their developing fetuses are uniquely vulnerable to a wide range of environmental hazards. During pregnancy, rapid and intricate developmental processes occur, making the fetus highly sensitive to environmental exposures that can disrupt those processes. Exposure of babies before they are born to hazards like air pollution, contaminated water, pesticides, and the impacts of climate change can have devastating and long-lasting consequences on their health. In low- and middle-income countries, these threats are often amplified. For example, reliance on unclean fuels for cooking exposes pregnant women to high levels of indoor air pollution, increasing the risk of gestational diabetes, high blood pressure pregnancy loss, and neurodevelopmental disorders in children. Similarly, exposure of the mother to contaminated water sources can lead to infections like cholera, which can severely impact placental health and potentially cause pregnancy loss. Climate change has increased the incidence of malaria and Zika virus, extreme heat, air pollution, and food insecurity, all of which pose significant risks to both mother and child. These exposures can even have intergenerational impacts affecting the health of future generations. Several factors contribute to this heightened vulnerability. Physiologically, pregnant women's bodies undergo significant changes, requiring greater food and fluid intake and increasing the rate of respiration and metabolism. These changes lead to greater absorption and retention of any harmful substances that are present in food, water, and air. Climate impacts such as drought reduce the availability of nutritious food and increase the cost. Undernutrition of the pregnant mother raises the risk of births at a preterm or low birth weight and of impaired brain development in the child. Pregnant women breathe in more air and therefore take in more air pollutants, which are harmful to both her health and the baby's. The chemicals in air pollution can enter a woman's circulation and then cross the placenta to reach the baby. The same is true for lead, arsenic, pesticides, chemicals in plastics and tobacco smoke. Antenatal exposure to these toxicants increases the risk of adverse birth outcomes, as well as neurodevelopmental disorders, asthma, and other respiratory diseases in childhood. These early exposures can also program the child for long-term health problems, such as obesity, cognitive impairment, behavioral and learning problems. And they can also increase the risk of lung disease, cancer, and neurological disorders in later adulthood. A question many people ask is, how do these chemicals and pollutants reach the fetus? So here is a quick summary. During pregnancy, the placenta attaches to the wall of the uterus. It is connected to the baby by the umbilical cord through which the placenta provides oxygen and nutrients to the baby and removes waste products. Crucially, while vital for nourishing the fetus, the placenta allows many pollutants and toxic chemicals to cross from the mother to the developing baby. Some simply diffuse across the placenta, others are transported across. Many produce inflammatory molecules and reactive oxygen species, resulting in damage to DNA and cell membranes, while others can bind directly to DNA. Stress experienced by the pregnant woman also results in inflammation and oxidative damage, getting under the skin of mothers and babies alike. 
The result can derail the complex processes involved in early development. For policymakers, the heightened vulnerability to environmental and climate threats during pregnancy and gestation is a critical concern because it impacts not only the immediate health of mothers and children, but also reduces the future human capital, the skills and knowledge essential to the economic productivity of the nation. Investing in the protection of pregnant women from environmental hazards is therefore an investment in a healthier and more prosperous future. Furthermore, the burden of these hazards disproportionately affects the most vulnerable populations, especially those living in fragile and conflict-affected situations, deepening existing health inequities. Addressing pollution and climate change is therefore a matter of social justice and equity. The good news is that policies to reduce pollution and curb climate change have been shown to have direct health benefits for children. My research in New York City found that policies implemented to reduce air pollution and curb climate change resulted in a 50% drop in air pollution in the air breathed by pregnant women. In Chongqing, China, we found that the closure of a coal plant was linked to better birth outcomes and cognitive abilities in children. In Krakow, Poland, the cleaner air due to the restriction of coal burning resulted in fewer preterm births, fewer low birth weight babies, and fewer children with asthma. All good news. There are several key areas where policymakers can take impactful action. First, reduce pollution by implementing stricter regulations on industrial and transportation emissions and promoting cleaner cooking solutions to reduce air pollution. Ensuring access to safe drinking water and sanitation is also crucial to prevent waterborne diseases. Policies to manage pesticide use in agriculture and protect communities from exposure to toxic substances like lead and arsenic are also vital. Second, strengthen public health systems to protect pregnant women and babies from climate-related hazards and strengthen surveillance and support to pollution-related illnesses. Promoting climate-resilient agriculture to ensure food security for pregnant women is also critical. Third, invest in public awareness campaigns to educate communities and all frontline workers about environmental risks during pregnancy and empower them to take protective measures. That is crucial. Finally, collaboration. There must be a commitment to centering the health of pregnant women and their babies in all climate and environmental policies. And this requires collaboration across the various sectors of society, including government, business, nonprofit organizations, education, and health. Prevention must always be our priority because every child deserves the chance to thrive and fulfill their greatest potential.